Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview and some benchmarks on this new video card from Galaxy. This is the Galaxy GeForce GTX 660 Ti GC, which means it's their overclocked edition. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is the two gigabyte frame buffer version of the GTX 660 Ti from Galaxy. They also make a three gigabyte frame buffer version. So uh, if you're planning on playing on multiple monitors or uh, higher resolutions like 2560 by 1600, three gig frame buffer version might be worth your while. The memory does uh, run at 6008 megahertz effective memory speed. Uh, it's on a 192 bit memory interface and that's one of the biggest differences between the 660 Ti and the 670. You get three 64-bit memory controllers with the 660 Ti, uh, 3 times 64 being 192. You get a three-year extended warranty from Galaxy for the card, so they're covering your butt if anything goes wrong in the future. You also have the GC version, which of course stands for factory overclocked. Uh, the Force Air bracket, which is a bit wider gaps in the PCI bracket at the back of your case for a bit more airflow at the back. Customized cooler on this one and uh, it's actually pretty cool cooler if I can say that and keep a straight face. Uh, I'll give you guys a closer look of course. 3 plus 1 display gaming as well which is a cool feature because you can support three monitors uh, actually four monitors off of this single video card. Three of them can be used for gaming. The fourth is a companion display so you can use that for web browsing or uh, chat dialogue, dialogue whatever you want to have up on there, so that's pretty cool. Over on the right side here, a little bit more information um, and sort of translated into marketing speak, but maximize your performance. That's talking about GPU boost. GPU boost will automatically overclock your video card uh, within a set parameter. So uh, this one, actually the base clock is 1006 megahertz, and that's up from the reference base clock of 915 megahertz. Uh, the boost clock on this one is 1085 megahertz, that's up from 980. And then uh, each GPU is going to behave a little bit differently. So ours actually, when I did the benchmarks on this guy, got up to 1,215 megahertz, which is pretty impressive right out of the box without any overclocking done on my part. Smoother gameplay, and this is talking about adaptive V-Sync. Essentially, it's going to turn V-Sync on or off. It's going to min minimize uh, stuttering or tearing, uh, which can be the results of V-Sync being on or off and your frame rate being higher or lower than the refresh rate of your monitor. Also, richer visuals, so you get NVIDIA features such as physics, 3D vision technology, uh, and of course SLI. You can do three-way SLI with the GTX 660 Ti. And then uh, you also get the Galaxy Extreme Tuner Plus, which is Galaxy's software uh, video card overclocking utility. Let's take a look inside the box, because we must look at accessories, of course. Here's the video card. I will come back to that. Here is some information from Galaxy to contact them directly if you have any issues with the card, uh, because they would like to help you out. Also in here we have another little pouch, which uh, is like some origami-like folding here. It's really not that complex. I'm just a little slow today. I've been doing a lot of benchmarks. It's okay. In here we have a setup, quick and easy setup guide there for you. So if you've never installed a video card before, that should walk you through it. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video for some more tips on that if you're not familiar with the hardware installation process. For uh, some more accessories here, we've got a couple power adapters. And now one of the differences between this Galaxy 660 Ti and the, uh, well, pretty much every other 660 Ti that I've uh, come across to date is you actually have a six pin and an eight pin PCI Express power connector. And that's simply because they've enhanced the uh, voltage regulators of power delivery uh, for this video card. So you get a little bit extra power for that. They're still recommending a 450 watt power supply minimum for the card and your computer case, but uh, you can use those adapters for Molex to PCI Express uh, if your power supply doesn't have those, but make sure you're at least meeting the minimum wattage requirement. You also have a digital DVI to analog VGA adapter right there, so you can use that uh, with one of the two DVI ports on the card. I'll show you which one because uh, one of them is digital only. We also have the GTX series user's manual right here, so a little bit more detail about specifically the 600 series here, contents and all that good stuff. More installation instructions. Let's now look at the card. Going to start off with a measurement here. So we always want to make sure the video card will fit in your chosen computer case. So there, as you can see down at the end, it is a little bit beyond 10 inches measured from the PCI bracket. So give yourself 10 and a quarter just to be safe, but should fit in most computer cases. This is a custom designed card, so not just the cooler here. 
on the front, but also the PCB on the back, entirely custom designed by Galaxy. Uh, the stock version, for example, has a much shorter PCB. They've added a lot, added a lot of length here, uh, particularly for the power delivery area, which you can see right down there. And of course, they have this awesome custom cooler that you can see has sort of a gray plastic partial shroud. Apart from that, as an open air cooler, you have two 85 millimeter fans. Those are going to be directing air down. Over all these aluminum fins that you can see, there's a huge aluminum fin array which goes down the entire length of the card. That's uh, making contact with the GPU right here in the center. It's also making some contact with uh, the uh, voltage and power delivery areas down here on this side. There's also a extra, if you can see this uh, silver uh, square right there, there's an extra little VRM heat sink on top of that. So uh, the fact that you have two fans here, it's directing air down over those. It's going to get plenty of air moving over the entire uh, surface of the PCB. It's going to keep your components cool. And uh, I mentioned earlier the GPU boost feature. That will only take effect if the thermals on the card are within uh, the parameters set by NVIDIA. So keeping this card cool is a very important thing to do to make sure that you're getting the maximum GPU boost values that are possible. Uh, now another uh, thing that I really like about this card, I'm going to demo this in a second, but if you look right there it says cleaning mode and uh, that's right next to that little Phillips head screw. Um, I'm going to unscrew that in a few minutes here and show you you can actually pull off this entire length of the card and the fans without removing the aluminum heat sinks, which allows you to clean out the card, uh, which is very important for, for video cards because you get a lot of uh, dust build up on those over time. And uh, by cleaning that out, you can again help keep your card's temperatures down. Over here is your power connectors, so two PCI Express power connectors. You need a 75 watt 6 pin one and a 150 watt 8 pin one. Again, 450 watt power supply recommended for this video card and your entire computer. Uh, I usually recommend going a little bit beyond that just so you have some headroom. But uh, that being said, looking here at the back, we can see where the GPU resides, which would be on the other side of the PCB right there at the center. Now the GPU is the GK104, codename GPU, it's a 28 nanometer Kepler architecture as designed by NVIDIA. And uh, the GK104, same GPU that's used in the 670, same as in the 680. Uh, one of the only real differences with this one, uh, from the 680 at least, is you have 7 SMX units instead of 8. Uh, the 670 and 660 Ti both have 7 SMX units, which means you still get 1,344 CUDA cores, uh, and you get the excellent performance provided by the 600 series overall. Also 112 texture units, 24 ROPs, uh, texture filter rate of 102.5 gigatexels per second, 3.54 billion transistors if you can imagine that there's that many things in that little bit of space. But it's all there, trust me. Gonna go over the uh, video outputs you have here on the back. You have four of them. Again, you can run monitors off of all four of them at the same time. Three of those you can use for gaming. Uh, so here's the sort of widened area at the uh, back that's going to provide a little bit more exhaust for the card. Uh, you also have your two, two dual link DVI connectors right there. Uh, please note that the one on top is DVI-D, that's digital only. One on the bottom is digital plus analog. So if you're going to use that included adapter, use it with the lower one right there. Uh, all the video outs on this card are capable of 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, apart from the DVIs, you also have an HDMI out and a DisplayPort 1.2 out. Looking uh, back at the back of the card, I wanted to point out that you have the uh, SLI fingers right there pointing out at the top. Uh, Three-way SLI capable, uh, this particular video card. So uh, you'll want to make sure you get the brackets installed for that if you're going to do an SLI setup. And you can get some pretty good results uh, for SLI configurations with this video card. Uh, it scales really well. And uh, if you are interested in some more benchmarks, by the way, um, we have a full 660 Ti review available on our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Newegg, you can look at all of our benchmarks for the 660 Ti. This card is not included in that roundup. We got it a little bit late. Uh, the benefit of that is that the, the uh, benchmarks I'm about to show you actually with the release day drivers, which are a little bit newer than the uh, drivers off the disk I was using for the rest of the benchmarks, uh, but if you do want to compare, you can pull up the benchmarks I'm about to show you, to show you alongside of those. Uh, let me show you guys the uh, dust removal system. All right, so here's a demo of that cleaning mode I mentioned earlier. As you can see, two tiny screws there, one on either side of the, uh, at the upper end of the card here by the PCI bracket. And uh, pretty much this will lift up a little bit. It's got a sort of snap-on section here at the back. And you can lift off this entire fan array, 
pretty awesome. You could remove it entirely. There are some plugs down here if you wanted, but uh, for the time being, I'm just going to set it aside. And this is going to give you really easy access to your entire array of fins right there, the aluminum fins. Also going to give us a better look at it. But this is, a, this is purely for cleaning purposes that they've put this uh, feature in. And it gives you really good access to the bottom of the fins. You can really get in there and clean all that off. If you have dust buildup over the aluminum fins right here, you can clean all that off. The beauty of this is you don't actually have to remove the entire cooler, which is going to break your uh, thermal paste contact with the GPU down there. It allows you to clean all that out. Make sure your video card is operating at optimal temperatures. Make sure your GPU boost is boosting, etc. And uh, then as uh, what I also wanted to point out here is you have uh, all these aluminum fins are going down the entire length of the card. You also have four copper heat pipes, nickel plated, that are going uh, in over the GPU right there and extending out at various points along the fin array to uh, properly disperse the heat. Make sure you get that all dispersed and keep your temperatures down. And then to uh, put it back on, you just snap the end on again here. Uh, lower the bracket like so until it pops back on and then you just put those two screws back on and you're all set to go Your card is clean and you're ready. That said, uh, we're going to move into benchmarks next and uh, for a point of reference I al also showing you guys some GTX 580 benchmarks Please bear in mind that the 580 I'm testing this against is a triple slot cooler Overclocked GTX 580 so as far as the temperatures go for comparison That is a really beefy card that we're putting it up against so here are your Galaxy GTX 660 Ti benchmarks. So there are your benchmarks guys, hopefully now you have a better idea of how this card performs, especially in relation to the previous top-end single GPU video card, the 580 from the GTX 500 series. Uh, bear in mind that if you are interested in the highest of the high-end eye candy, uh, anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, that the uh, 670 and 680 do perform a bit better in that respect, simply due to the uh, widened memory pipe, the 256-bit versus 192-bit. The 580 we were running against a 384-bit memory interface, so that's where it got the edge in a couple of those benchmarks. However, with the 660 Ti, you do get access to NVIDIA's new uh, FXAA and TXAA anti-aliasing techniques. Techniques they're each, uh, They each work differently, but uh, both of those are much less of a performance hit, so they'll hit your frame rate less uh, as compared to MSAA. So keep an eye out for titles that support those anti-aliasing techniques. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Galaxy GeForce GTX 660 Ti GC Overclocked Edition with the custom cooler and PCB from Galaxy. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can check out more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and thank you very much for watching Newegg TV.